hi there, I'm in my neighbor's shed, I'm helping her clean it out. And she said, hey, help yourself to anything you want. I did, I got myself a bowling ball. I'm going back to my studio and make myself some art. Let's do this. I knew when I saw this bowling ball in my friend's shed the other day, it spoke to me. It said, Pick me. I can be a great gazing ball for your garden. And that's exactly what we're working on today. My friends, pull up a seat, grab your beverage of choice, and let's create a gazing ball together. For today's project, you will need some type of sphere. I am recycling a bowling ball, but you may use a glass orb, a fish bowl, any type of sphere that you can find. You get my message. Then you're gonna want also some type of mosaics to put on it. I'm using cut glass. I have a pair of tile nippers here too, just in case they're not the correct size. And I have also an assortment of flat back as well as other stones here that I could possibly use. You can use shells also, but they're kind of more difficult to grout. The other thing that I'm using is I'm using a collar here to keep the bowling ball in place. The other thing you'll notice is that I filled in my holes with some cement and you want them flush with the bowling ball so that it makes it easier to put your pieces on. You'll need some sandpaper. In this case, I want to sand my bowling ball down because it's pretty glossy. And the other thing you'll need is thin set mortar. I'm using that to adhere. I've already mixed it. This is really, really thick. And that's exactly how I want it. I could probably, I could probably add a little bit more water, but not too much because you want a heavy consistency. So as I said, you're gonna to wanna to sand this down to get all the gloss off, and then you'll wipe it down with a little bit of, just a little bit of soap and water, or just water, just simply wipe it down, it's not a big deal. For today's gazing ball, I am using a lot of cut glass. I had started mentioning the cut glass earlier, and I am just simply in the mood for some bling for my garden. I am gonna throw in some of these flat back stones. I love the reflections in the sun. It's super nice. Just remember that when you're cutting these things, you wanna wear safety glasses. That's super, super important. Yeah, these. <laughs> um, so this is what I'm gonna be doing here. Now this might seem a little slow at first. I, I actually find it very therapeutic, honestly. You just wanna press that in. My preference is to not see a lot of grout. You will want to use sanded grout if you do leave a lot of space here in between. Another option is that you can actually paint your ball, your sphere first, and then put this on. So, okay, this is gonna take me a while. You wanna make sure that when you're laying your tiles or your, your glass or whatever you're laying down, there's no points coming up. Because if there's points coming up, that means that the piece is a little too big for that space. I want to take this time to mention a few important things. Number one, I went for a refill on my, uh, my thin set, and it's always important to add water to your thin set, not thin set to water. And that goes for grout as well when you're mixing grout. Now I'm letting this sit a few moments so it thickens up, it kind of like rests a little bit. And then I'm going back to applying my tesserae to my ball, my mosaics to my ball. This is coming out quite nicely. I'm very excited. Lots of bling, lots of shine, lots of reflection. This is the look I'm going for. I'll turn this around so you can see that. Isn't that spectacular? Oh my goodness gracious. That is gonna look amazing in my garden. So the other thing I want to mention is when you're placing your mosaics 
or cut glass or your tiles, whatever it is that you're placing, and something isn't right, don't be afraid to lift it up and redo it because now is the time to do that. For example, I'm always stopping and periodically I'm checking the the sides here around the ball to make sure that everybody is level. You don't want little things sticking up and catching you and cutting you. Now, can it be rectified later on when everything's completely dry? Yes, you can do that. You can sand it down after it's been, uh, you can take a, like a little Dremel or something or a dental tool and file it down. But it's nice to have that done as you're doing it versus trying to have a whole bunch of work at the very end. It can be done. I've done it many times on my sculpture myself. So it's not like it cannot be done. When you're laying down your thin set, I started getting a little sloppy here. I'm gonna admit, I got a little sloppy, so I took a break. I went in, got some hot tea, and just kind of got myself together because it, it doesn't pay to keep working on something when you start to get sloppy. When you start to get sloppy, just stop and take a break. That's the most important advice as an artist that I can give to any of you, even doing daytime crafts or whatever you're putting your mind to. It's always just so nice just to take a small breather, walk around your garden, take a dog for a walk, go read a, you know, a couple pages in your book, and then come back to this. This is always going to be here. And the most important thing, it's for pleasure. And you're producing something so, so beautiful. All right, let's get back to our project and we'll finish this up. Finishing the last of the mosaics on the ball. It looks really, really good. I'm so excited. Everything seems to be in place, drying quite nicely, just the way I want it. I do have some little pieces that I want to kind of tuck in here. Right now, kind of like a cut and paste at this point because I do have just a few areas I need to clean up a little bit. Yeah, I guess that's pretty good. What we want to do at this juncture uh, is to check around the sphere and make sure all of the areas are filled in that you want filled in. And that there's no major areas that are sticking up so that they, that you get hurt. It might be a little sharp. I feel, no, this is okay. I do see a few points here that I'd like to fill in though. I'm simply going to check the ball, check the sphere, Look at this beauty. Dried, all ready to go, all ready to be grouted. Bling, 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 bling. Okay, I have some truckle colored sanded grout. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of that up. Add a little bit of water. We're gonna mix it up really well and just let it rest for like five, 10 minutes. My charcoal grout is ready and we're ready to push it into the crevices of the ball. Remember, you're doing one section at a time. You should have a sponge handy. I'm using this old uh, kitchen sponge and another container of clean water. I'm using also a popsicle stick to kind of force this in. And I'm also covering my hands with plastic gloves. It's a little messy, but that's okay. This is also on a disposable covering here on my desktop. You can also do it outside if that's your preference. That's very easy to do too. Your object here is to remove the grout from the glass, leaving the 
pick out lines that are stuck in the crevasses intact. We're going to continue in this manner until the whole ball has been done and just going to work in sections, section by section. Keep grouting, wiping it away, grout, wipe away, and keep turning the ball until the entire surface has been grouted. And every time you do each section, you need to wipe away and force in the grout into the crevices and wipe away the remainder on top of the glass or your mosaics, whatever you're using. What I have here is a clean piece of old t-shirt. And I'm simply quickly wiping away any excess grout. And this is after the sponge. My gazing ball is now complete. I will wait about 24 hours before putting it into the garden. That should be an ample enough cure time given the temperature is pretty mild right now and the humidity is fairly low here in South Florida. Those are both factors in how long it will take your grout to cure. And in that time, and in 24 hours or so, I will go over the ball again into the mirrored sections and really give it a high shine. It's just even saying like more bling. This is my garden area where I was thinking of putting my new bling. For now, she's gonna be sharing the space with my garden angel totem. I would like to see her get her own pedestal though. I think she's deserving of that. I do like it on this. I like the height, it showcases it. Like maybe you would showcase a sculpture. I think that's very pretty. I was telling you earlier that I do like my bling. It's my alligator, done the same way. More garden totems, more garden balls. This is one of my favorite garden balls. <laughs> I was originally going to do something with that and I thought, you know, it's a Tom and Jerry. I don't think I can really touch that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a great time and I hope you did too. Have a beautiful day. Man, is this thing heavy? Oh my God, how do they bowl with this thing?